can't stop the fish to the end of Oh, boys and girls, children of all ages, hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to the unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, and commercial free, for now, Sharks Podcast, that is the Pucknologist, here on Teal Town USA. There's another interesting week of hockey for you Sharks, as they went 1-1-1 one, one, and one over three games this week. We're going to dive into those games, plus we'll discuss a very disappointed William Eklund heading back to Jergadens. I just like saying it like that. This is the time on Sprockets when we dance. Alarming attendance numbers. An Evander Kane sighting. The Jack Eichel trade and more. But first, remember, help us out if you can. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media. And if you'd like to help support the content we deliver, you can donate using the Super Chat option during live shows. But our preferred donation method is Venmo. And you can find us there at Teal Town USA. Any and all donations are, of course, appreciated. And if you're not watching live on YouTube, make sure to add your take in the comments section of this video. Sound good? All right. Let's go. How are we doing? How are we doing, everybody? Enjoy well, Join your son. First things first, I just want to say... Um, how many not even sharks podcasts? How many how many podcasts NHL podcasts out there in general can say that their intro song is performed by the Red Hot Chili Peppers? I'm just saying. Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably the same amount that aren't sponsored by Manscaped. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean know. I don't know. I mean it's <sighs> I'm not too sure. You know, uh, you know, Anthony and I go way back, so. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Uh, currently, the Sharks are 6 4 and 1. Right now, third in the Pacific Division behind Edmonton and Calgary. But if the Ducks win tonight, currently tied with the Blues at the start of the third period. Uh, but if the Ducks win, that would knock the Sharks down to fourth. I don't know that we care for that. Sharks played three games this week. Let's start with Buffalo. That was a 5-3 to three win for Team Teal. James Reimer would get his second straight start for the first time this season. As we sh said he should last week. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about him in a little bit. Um, it was essentially the same group that played against Winnipeg when you got a third of the team out on pro COVID protocol. But the one kind of story that was the outlier for this one is people literally could not give tickets away to this one. <laughs> 10,059 tickets sold, not scanned, sold. Ended up being the smallest attendance in franchise history at SAP Center without COVID restrictions. If you Epic. Yeah, well, Epic. dude, and I mean, it sucks. Uh, it, it, it was so bad. Remember, this was an ESPN Plus game. Bucigras even pleading with fans at the end of it to come out. I mean, yikes. Uh, and this was a tough one to miss. Uh, you, I mean, if you had tickets, uh, you missed Hurdle scoring two of the best goals I've ever seen from him, continuing to up his trade value. Uh, Ryan Merkley netting his first NHL goal, but also displaying some very elusive moves, playing a little bit of ring around the rosy there. Uh, Hataka only played four <laughs> shifts in the second. I, I'm Hataka, Green Jacket, Those Gold who don't jacket. know, it's a player called Hataka. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, none in the third after taking a high hit. Uh, the Sharks would play 5D for the second half of the game, and still 10 Sharks got points in this game. All the goals were scored 5-on-5, five five, except one, which was 4-on-4, four four, so all even strength. You love to see it, especially against a Buffalo team that, you know, generally sucks but has – had a good start this season, Jerk. Yeah, well, that's that's the one thing I was going to point out, you know, is like uh, people are saying, oh, man, mm -hmm. Buffalo sucks. Like, they should lose. And, and yes, you're theoretically correct. But at the time, you know, Buffalo was on a really good run. You mm -hmm. know, they've, you know, they, um, I guess that game against the Sharks was sort of the beginning of, of their return to, to the atmosphere here and on Earth. Um, but... <laughs> You know, they had played really well to start the season, so whatever you feel about how Buffalo is going to finish, it was still important to play well against this team just based on how they had started. Yeah, and it's it's just it's another game that I look at and I go, yeah, on paper, 
you, you're supposed to win this game, mm-hmm. even with that many people out. But you're, you're supposed to win this game. And a season ago, two seasons ago with Jones and Net, I don't know if they do, but this one, they did. Uh, we follow that up. Hosting. Wait, really, oh, go I, ahead. I just want to say really quick, and this is going to be um, – this will be one of our themes – for the week, uh, if you will. Um, (laughs) did, did you, I know you caught, but I'll ask again for the audience sake. Um, did you happen to notice who on the sharks had two assists in this game? Whip it out. Uh, it was, you know, like I said last week, the player that everybody loves to hate, apparently Rudy (laughs) Balsers. (laughs) Oh, I just wanted to get that in there before we talk about it more. Nice dig. (laughs) <laughs> nice dude. And uh, just another Randy G in, in the chat saying the ESPN crew sucked. So terrible. Merkley had to score his first goal without raining calling it. Uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit, just to so, let you know. Well, I, I do want to jump on that really quick. So I thought, and maybe this is a weird thing to point out, but I, I actually liked the, the ESPN Plus broadcast from the perspective of um, you know, the national partners, they always talk about building the brand, getting new fans, um, you know, making the, the product look good. And I feel like this was the first um, nationally televised Sharks game that I had watched, you know, like in, in all 15 or how many of 16 years of, of NBC never saw this, like between Boutregrasse and, and, and Bush. Like it seemed like, you know, they they were getting into on the broadcast, like getting into the intricacies of the Sharks organization, Mm -hmm. talking about the Barracuda. They had a Barracuda sweater on there. Like it really felt like they were like, okay we're covering the Sharks in San Jose. Like, let's let's talk as if we do this every night. And I appreciated that. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give them some credit for for trying. Uh, whoever their graphics guy is needs to get off the sauce. Well, the ESPN graphics suck anyway, but yeah. that's a different conversation. But when you're misspelling names, when you're getting stats wrong, mm-hmm. <laughs> get it, get the hell out of here. <laughs> but I, but I appreciate what you're saying, and, and again, they're trying. And you know, NBC wasn't lighting the fire or lighting the world on fire when they first started. So let you know, let's give them a season to work their their shit out. In in um you know lucky for them is NBC never really lit the world on fire so they've got it's a very low bar to clear. I know. And for those of you listening uh, or watching live, um, Ducks just made it two one. Uh, so anyway, there you go. We move on to the Sharks versus St. Louis game. Uh, this ended up being a five three loss for Team Teal. Uh, St. Louis coming in the top team in the Central. However, it was the second night of back-to-backs for the Blues after losing in L.A. the night before in the shootout uh, in what would end up being William Eklund's last game, which we'll get into him in a little bit, but <laughs> Aiden Hill would get the start despite our advice. Uh, uh, t- all right, go ahead. What's his name? Nazhev? Kinyazhev. Kinyazhev. I'm never going to get that. Can, can we sign one guy whose name is like Smith? <laughs> yeah, Just, we we had one a few years ago. It didn't work out. So uh, well. Oh, see, I liked it. Uh, all right, so Kinyajev makes his NHL debut with uh, Hatika, <laughs> <laughs> still day to day with an upper body injury. Uh, lots of penalties early for the Blues in the in this one. Burns eventually made them pay after a ridiculous amount of passing on the power play. Uh, the Blues faced extended PK time, but ended up picking up a shorty. Uh, for me, dude, Aiden Hill looked rather Martin Jones-esque in this one. Yeah, well, f- f- first things first, before we get going, I do want to say between you know between Kinyajev, between Hataka, and everybody else on this team, I, I feel like in saying these names, there there are muscles in my face <laughs> that have never worked this hard to, <laughs> say, to saying, say these names. I, um, dude. I, I, this is, and um, so the Sharks, uh, you know, obviously including the game that came after this, um, the Sharks have played 11 games this year. Uh, and this is really the only game I'm upset about mm. because even though obviously St. Louis, they're a good team this year. They're number one in the central division. I feel like the Sharks had them on the ropes a lot. and Especially early. Especially early. You know, they had, what, like like nine minutes of power play time or something ridiculous. And 
they didn't take advantage as much as I would have wanted them to. I mean, I still give them credit for hanging in there with a good team. Yep. But when you got them on the ropes, you got to finish the job. And to your point, I thought this was Aiden Hill's first bad game uh, in a shark sweater. And you hope that this is the you hope that this is a rare moment and not the norm. Yeah, this the, <laughs> this better be a bug, not a feature. Because <laughs> yeah, Hay- Hayton's dropped. The, this was his third loss consecutive. So let's stop that. Uh, each team would get a shorty in this one for the second time this season. The Sharks had a game where they both got one on the shorthanded side and gave up one. When does that ever happen? Right. Well, twice <laughs> twice so far this season. <laughs> uh, tickets sold in this one eleven thousand eight hundred. So they increased it by about eighteen hundred. But uh, despite the game being what it was, like we said, the, you know, there there was a lot of good stuff to watch in this one early. So it's it's disappointing to see that that turnout. Like I can almost understand like Buffalo draws for nothing in the Bay Area, but St. Louis, the the playoff history that the Sharks have had with that team over the last twenty years, you would think it would be a little bit better than that. But whatever. All, all I'm just saying. And and if you don't know this, I don't know how you don't know this. Um, but I, I, I if you uh, know, you know. Yeah. Um. You know, fifty percent of the people on this podcast don't live in San Jose, and I'm telling you right now, like I'm seeing how many tickets have been sold game to game. I'm seeing what the prices are and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. If I still lived there, I can honestly say I probably would be at every game so far this season. Yeah, you <laughs> can, and we'll we'll talk about that in a hot sec too. But yeah, you can. Uh... I mean, I look and I say, look at all these empty seats I could be in. Right? I'm just yeah. saying. Uh, <laughs> finally, we move on to Sharks, New Jersey. A 3-2 shootout loss. And I, there's just something so perfect about the abbreviation for that being SOL. <laughs> 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 the Sharks were SOL in this one. 3-2 to two in a shootout. Uh I'm not sure if this was like the first opportunity to this season that there could have been potentially crappy ice because the Barracuda did play a matinee game on this same day. So, and, and we'll get into this one in a little bit, but um, let me just say the Cuda left a bitty, uh, left a bitty. I want to say pretty. Yeah. I don't think you can say that anymore, but go ahead. Oh yeah. No, the the Cuda (laughs) stunk up the joint pretty good earlier in the day. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but um, the Devils, this is another one where they came, well, the Sharks saw a team coming in. They lost the previous evening in L.A. Now, this time the Devils, uh, they took L.A. to a shootout. But either way, the Sharks almost closed this one out. Reimer starts, as we said should happen. Uh, New Jersey coming in also as the youngest team in the league and with all the Sharks youth, boy, makes you wonder if this game had to have been like the youngest amount of people in in a game like in NHL (laughs) history. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of traded chances in the first following a Balser's penalty kill. Ferraro would feed Rudolphs for the 1-0 lead. Uh, Hatika, oh, (laughs) but I just love it. Um, a turnover leads to a New Jersey goal. We were at 1-1. Uh, it was kind of a slow game to start things off, but uh, in the third, Dolan would snipe his fifth of the season on the power play, which is, again, something we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, Merkley got his pocket picked for the late 2-2 goal, which would, boom, eventually get us to overtime, get us to the shootout. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm going to take this homestand record with seven guys missing – Half of them big money guys. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the sh- you mentioned seven guys missing, which is obviously that right there is a is a is a stat. Well, let's <laughs> um, throw it up. I mean, yeah, there's a throw lot of <laughs> throw it up. I mean, and and now Dolan is on this list because this was the initial protocol list. But just think about it. I mean, and and same with Cogliano. But I mean, Carlson, Middleton, Nieto, Shimmick. Vlasic, hell, the head coach hasn't Meyer been in the LeBanc. building. Yeah, Myron LeBanc, uh, but the, the the head coach hasn't been in the building for a week. 
And <laughs> and you know what you know you know you might not think about this, but even Ray you know Ray Tufts the who you know the head, the, the head <laughs> the head trainer he's in protocol as well. Yeah, you know, and that that plays a difference. And I and I actually I do feel bad for Ray Tufts because he's the he's the only guy on the coaching staff that wears a mask on the bench. So the fact that he got it, I'm like, damn, like I just think that's really shitty. Um, yeah, right. But the one guy I, trying. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, you know, I, I, I do want to walk back something I said about the St. Louis game. I said this was the only game that made me upset. This one made me upset as well for the same reason. I mean, the Sharks had the Devils on the ropes multiple times in this game. Especially, you look, New Jersey is seventh in the Metropolitan Division. That said, everybody in the Metropolitan Division is good. Mm-hmm. But still, like, this is a team that I, I don't want to say the Sharks should beat them. But the Sharks shouldn't be in a 2-1 or 2-2 thriller with them you know like you're expecting goals in this game and now that's not to say that they're a a nightmare you know Jonathan Bernier is a good goaltender but it's like I just expected more right and you know I'm I'm obviously pumped as we'll get into you know Rudolph Spalser is getting the goal there got the um (laughs) the gorilla off his back so to speak but it's just like it seemed it seemed like there were so many opportunities to sort of you know get your hands around the throat of New Jersey, so to speak. And they, and they didn't do that. Um, and, and I like what you mentioned about Merkley as well. You know, my, my take on him since he got called up has been, you know, he's very good in the offensive zone and in the defensive zone, I would say he's just okay. And, but I felt like he was getting better over this week. Sure. Sure. But I just, you know, I point to his turnover on the Kuokin and goal and like, that's, that's one of those situations where, I mean, on you one can't hand, you, give that up that right there uh, on the front door. That's the th- and that's the thing. I think you know the onus is a little bit on his teammates to either say time or move it one or the other. And I didn't hear that on either of those. But also, you know, for Merkley, especially in the front of the net, like recognize where you are. And you know, being that he was in front of the net and he's got guys coming on him, you know, don't I'm throw sorry, it but right phrasing, up. Phrasing, dude. Yeah, right. But like, you know, don't don't throw up right up the middle of the ice. You know what I mean? Dump it in the corner, dump it off the glass and out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't want to get down on the guy, but like they they tell you in youth hockey, like, (laughs) don't throw it up the middle of the ice. (laughs) You know, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, In this one, twelve thousand tickets sold for a Saturday night game. So over the course of three games this week, the Sharks averaged just a hair under. 11,300. We can do better, people. We can I do, do better. I do want to point out as well, shout out to Diego in the chat for make, for reminding me. John Leonard hit the post three times in this game. Uh, I believe Hurdle hit the post in this one. I think maybe even Dolan hit the post. There was a lot of posts in yep. this one. And the Anaheim Ducks have now made it 3-1. So Epic. It's looking like <laughs> the Sharks are going to move down to the fourth position. Uh, anyway, which is fine. It's early. No, dude, small sample size. Uh, (laughs) so standouts for me this week, uh, Nick Merkley. Nice. Uh, stood out for me in a positive way. And the best part, I'm not going to, uh, throw this particular person under the bus, but there was a media member who tweeted out and then immediately deleted what was a very funny tweet. Uh, but basically said like, like me over the last two games. Man, this Nick Merkley kid is a uh, a decent depth player. Me, five games ago. Who the fuck is number 10? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I was a little bummed that they deleted that tweet because I thought that was very funny and, and poignant at the same time. But either way, uh, very true. But yes, I've liked Nick Merkley. Uh, the ones that I want to kind of call out, Cogs and Bones. Trademark. Uh, Cogliano and Benino. Uh, Benino hasn't scored a goal, right? Uh, he doesn't have any points at all, which Jesus I know, Christ. <laughs> but the thing is, the thing to remember is like, that's, I, I understand where you're coming from. You'd like to him to have one, yeah. but that's not, but that's not why he's here. I get it. But with Eklund out and him getting that, right. that slot out, it's like, oh boy. I mean, can, can we set the table for you a little bit? More? You know, it, it's, it, it, it's amazing. You know, they, 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 uh, we'll get into it, but you know, they had a player who, who, who could play well in that spot. Hmm. And uh, I don't remember what happened to him. Yeah, I I think we'll find out in a little bit. 
Uh, and finally, uh, when we talk about standouts, uh, if Ferraro, if Super Mario is not your early team MVP vote getter, you're doing it wrong. I mean, Chief is eating minutes left and right, stepping up with EK65 Vlasic Shimmick all out. Uh, for me, you can't say enough about Ferraro. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, he's, I think it's three games in a row now. He set a new personal record for ice time in a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, but the, the fact that he can be out there as much as he is and still hold up very well, I think is a testament to who he is as a player. Obviously you don't want that to be the status quo going forward, yeah. but it, it's good to know you have it as an option. Ugh. Um, my standout, uh, Rudy, Rudy <laughs> Balsers, man, I'll tell you what. So, um, I want, and like I, I want, said last I week, I want Rudy know, to dress for me, coach. Right. And you know what the guy, like I said last week, the guy that everybody loves to hate, apparently, you know, um, in his last three games, one goal, three assists, you know, he's, um, he's taking more shots, which I like, he's getting more ice time, but also on the other side of the puck, he's hitting, He's getting takeaways. He's doing, he's just, he just does everything right. And, you know, he's out there killing penalties and, um, I just, man, you know, I, I said it last week Ian Reed said it last week, like Balsers just needs to get one and, 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 you know, the dam's going to burst for him. Well, he's got the one. So here we go. Right. I'm, I'm just, I could not be more excited at the potential. And, and sharks less in the chat saying that the a on Ferraro's Jersey really stands for awesome. Confirmed. <laughs> Shoe sign in the chat saying Ferraro is turning exactly into what we had hoped. The next generation pickles. Let's just hope it doesn't end the same way. Yes. Good Lord. Uh, so what do you got there? Numbers? Um, right now, the Sharks power play has kind of dwindled the scotch, but again, still very early in the season. Uh, 22%, 14th in the NHL. So at least in the top half. Shorts did score two power play goals in regulation this week, also giving up the shorty and getting a shorty, as we mentioned earlier. And again, second time this season. How often do you see that? Uh, the PK started 10 for 10, but now 89% fourth in the league. Not shabby. Yeah, still not bad. Face-off win percentage right now at 52. So, hey, better than 50 cent, 50%. You'd like to see it. Eighth in the NHL. Now, here's the numbers I, that... Oh, go ahead. Really, really quick. For those three stats you mentioned, power play, penalty kill, face-offs, I, I don't know that there's any science to back this up, but I, I personally believe for all three of those stats you just talked about, if you're in the top 16, I think you're doing okay. Generally speaking, yes. Only because 16 teams make the playoffs. Right. That's how I look at it. And... But to your point, fourth uh, penalty kill, fourth faceoffs, eighth, even power play, fourteenth. Like the Sharks are better than more than half the league. So you take it, right? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm watching the Wild just hit like empty netter after empty netter right now. Uh, <laughs> so the numbers that you don't like to see, Aiden Hill right now a three fifth three point one five goals against average. A save percentage of 886 right now. For those of you who forgot, Martin Jones threw up a 896 for three straight years. Hill won his first three games, including a shutout, has lost his last three games. On the flip side of that coin, James Reimer has a 1.6 goals against average, a 946 save percentage. He's 3-1-1 one one right now. Best goals against average in the league currently, aside oh, yeah. aside from Billy Huso, but Huso only has one start. So to me, that's like anomaly. So, you know, anybody can get lucky on one start. But, dude, fourth in safe percentage. Ironically, Martin Jones second with a 950. <laughs> well, but even, even Martin Jones, I think Martin Jones has only played three games. Yeah, but 3-0. What, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, blue line points. That was something that we talked about last week because uh, there were new bl no blue line points last week. This week, three goals, seven assists. All in on the season, five goals, 19 assists in 11 games coming from the blue line. So, you, oh, dude, you, you love we to love see it. it. Yeah. Like to see that blue it's, line get it, involved. 
especially from a blue line that is as depleted as it is. I, I mean, F- Ferraro, all of the sudden, <laughs> is is a guy getting in on offense, right? Oh, dude, you know, Mar- you had like what a goal and two assists this week? No, I'm a uh, goal and three assists this week. Yeah, which is all but one of his points for the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> but as we always say, when when you're on the ice the most, chances are the most things are going to happen while you're there. True that. Uh, and then with two points, uh, both assists against the Devils, Brent Burns tied Sergei Zubov for most points in NHL history by a defenseman with one team after being traded. So Sergei Zubov is in the Hall of Fame. Makes you think. Mm-hmm. 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 So <laughs> coming up this week, the Sharks will start a five-game road trip. They're going to play three games until we talk again next week. So it's at Calgary, at Winnipeg, at Colorado. Let's start with Calgary. Currently four points ahead of the Sharks. First game of the season that the Sharks finally face a team in their division. Can you believe that? That's one game against a divisional opponent in the first 25 games of your schedule. And the 26th game, also against Calgary. (laughs) It's because they the? it's because they want the run to the end of the season to be dramatic. I, I get I think. it, but dear lord. And and if memory serves, I think this is gonna be the first time in what four years? I'd have to look this up, but uh when was the last time the San Jose Sharks faced a team coached by their former coach, Daryl Sutter? It's been a hot yeah. minute. You know, good point because I think because Daryl Sutter got fired by LA in I want to say 2017, 2017 or 18, 2018, June. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, he retired. <laughs> well, he's back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a hot minute since you've seen old bitter beer face. So uh, that should be a fun one up at the Saddle I, Dome. <laughs> I just want to – this is unrelated, but I feel the need to point it out. Did you happen to catch Daryl Sutter's press conference uh, after Emily Kaplan from ESPN tweeted that the Flames were close on Eichel? <laughs> no, but I'm sure that was something oh. to write home about. <laughs> so what was there it, two were, words? He's like – Well, so th- I don't know which – I can't recall which <laughs> Two words, and I'm sure it was probably – wait, what? <laughs> no, I, I don't recall which reporter it was who asked him about it, but he basically was like – he basically was acting as if he had never heard of Jack Eichel before. <laughs> He's like, oh, I, yeah, like, I, is he active? Is he deactivated? Like, I don't know what the story is there. You know, I don't know. It, like, it's like he's just acting like he'd never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, anytime Daryl Sutter says anything, you're not even sure if he's, like, aware of, like, where he is. Right. Oh, man. God, I love Sutter. <laughs> so... You've got the uh, the Calgary game. After that, Winnipeg. Yes, Winnipeg again. Christ Almighty! Three. How many times? So this is going to be what we're talking: two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thir- thirteen games. And the Sharks have seen Winnipeg three times. <laughs> Dear nice. Lord, uh, we all remember the Sharks beat the Jets in their home opener four to three, then two to one in overtime last Saturday. So. I would imagine that Winnipeg, probably a little pissed off, probably wants to get at least one win against the Sharks this season. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe Dylan can fire up the boys. Um, And then before we talk to you again, uh, that third game of the five-game roadie will be against the Avalanche, who were most people's pick, including mine, to win the Central. Currently now sixth in the division. I mean, are they just missing Grubauer? Is it more than that? I mean, are they depleted by injuries like the Sharks or Vegas or something? Well, I, I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, obviously, um, yes, they lose Grubauer, who, and I, again, it, this is not the podcast to do this, but I feel, I just feel like Colorado should have done more to keep Grubauer. I mean, he was a finalist for the Vesna Trophy, and you let him go without really putting up a fight. I <laughs> to think. be fair, the team that had the Vesna Trophy let him go too. <laughs> right, but what I'm saying is, you you put up this player who is so good for you, you give him up without putting up a fight, you probably deserve some losses coming your way. Yes, they have Darcy Kemper, who's good, but another pending UFA who's had some injury problems in the past. Now, obviously, we'll see. But I think it goes beyond the goaltending. I mean, you look at um, look at their forwards specifically. I mean, they lost Jonas Donskoy to the Kraken. They lost Brandon Saad to the St. Louis Blues. I mean, that's, 
that's two really good players that have just left out of their really good top nine and they haven't done anything about it. I mean, they, they have Logan O'Connor playing in that second line, which I'm personally a fan of Logan O'Connor, but he's not quite there yet. Um, as, as just another Randy G is pointing out, Kale McCarr is on injured reserve as well, which certainly doesn't help things as is Valeri Nichushkin, another member of their top nine, oh, but I also, words. yeah, <laughs> but, um, you know, and McKinnon was on the COVID protocol as well. So it, it, they're very similar to Vegas where, you know, they lost some guys early and it's affected them. But also I think the personnel that they lost over the summer and just didn't replace, I think is playing a role as well. Gotcha. And I'd be I'd be curious, similar to, you know, um, going from 1819 to 1920, comparing the Sharks goals for per game in those two seasons. I'd be curious to compare the Avalanche as well, because I could see it be a similar situation. Nice. Uh, let's take That's... it to the chat here real quick before we get into our quick hits. Uh, just another Randy G asking any thoughts on the hockey guy putting the Sharks at 13 on the weekly power rankings? Look, <clears throat> excuse <Who>? me. <laughs> No, uh, I, who is that? Is it, people still watch that guy? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, the, the, the hockey guy, uh, he has his moments. Uh, there are you know, certain things I go, yep, no, I agree with him. There are other things where I go, oh, I hadn't thought about that. And then there are sometimes I'm like going, this guy has no fucking idea about the San Jose Sharks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, That's sometimes I, how I feel about it, about this podcast. Yeah, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, him putting the Sharks at 13, pfft, Whatever. There were a lot of people that never had the San Francisco Giants at the top of their list, and they only won more games than any other team. So, they whatever. Lost in the first round, but whatever. Yeah, hey, <laughs> as as did the uh, San Jose Sharks when they won the President's Trophy. So, you right. Um, let's see here. I did get. Uh, I saw something else that a lot of people wanted to comment on, which of course is: Have we congratulated Jerk yet on his verbal commitment to a long term deal? <laughs> <laughs> No, we have not. <laughs> okay, and 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 we'll save that for later. Yes, I I've some long term no move clause. Yeah, no move clause. Um, no, not a three team. No, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not modified. It's a full no move clause. Full no move. Good, not, good to know. Uh, so let's get into Eklund's status, which is he gone? <laughs> D- despite oh our, no, anyway. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> hey, eyes on your own paper. Uh, the, the Sharks decided to send William back to the Swedish hockey league and holy shit. Have you ever seen a kid that was more disappointed? Wow. As he should be though. (laughs) Yeah. He worked his ass off. He belongs here. I mean, that's the short version. Yeah. He belongs here. Like, you know, haters are going to look at the stats and they're going to say, wow, four assists in nine games. But it's like, that's better than a lot of rookies who were drafted four months ago. Not only that, but showed that he can play in the top six. He can play the minutes, play with the players, and hold up. I mean, it's it's not. I I don't want to give the impression that it's hurting his development by sending him back to Deer Garden because it's not. Yeah. It there's no. This is not bad. At the same time, he belongs here. Well, and Brody and Remenda brought up during pregame Ooh. that there's been several guys including Jonathan Dolan, who, you know, sent back, dominated, and then came back and have, I mean, you look at Dolan so far, has pretty much dominated. Well, and I and I think the comparable is worth um, making, and I know I've made this comparable in the past, but you look at, you look at Miko Rantanen. I mean, who? I think we're all in agreement, good player, right? <laughs> and, and same, same, same situation. Yeah. Played his rookie, you know, that first season after he was drafted, he played nine games, had no points, was dash seven. And you know what? He got sent to the AHL, blew it up down there, and he came back to the NHL. I think he's one of the best right-wingers in the league. So You know what? Let's talk about that for a second. I'm so happy you brought that up. And Ryan, uh, don't go away on the chat. I want to get to your comment, which we will in a second. But I'm so happy you brought this up uh, because I want to combat (laughs) the ridiculous amount of misinformation being spread on the Sharks fan Facebook page, could Eklund have been sent to the CUDA? Yes. Would it burn a year of his ELC if that had happened? No. Why is it better for him to go to Sweden than the Barracuda? Because, well, first of all, the Barracuda have like a thousand players. Um, second of all, the Barracuda, or I'm sorry, the Barracuda and the AHL in general is either, 
young guys or older guys who are <laughs> want to make just, them a name for themselves by being knuckle draggers. Yeah, who are wheeling around doing that kind of stuff. He goes to the Swedish Hockey League. He's playing in the top the top league in Sweden. You know, this is you know to say this is the Swedish version of the NHL. Not totally correct, but it's not totally incorrect either. You have guys who it's their dream to play in the Swedish Hockey League, mm-hmm. and you get him there. He's playing with adults who are. That's their dream. That is their ceiling. I want to play for Jurgarden and I want to win a Swedish Hockey League championship. Sure. Um, now here's... And he gets to be teammates with Marcus Sorensen. <laughs> 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 Who, Great. by the way, 16 points in 18 games. How you doing? Hey, that's good knowledge right there. <laughs> uh, the best part, of course, about this whole thing is Brett Hedekin telling Ooh. Kevin Kurz... Eklund wants to be part of the NHL, and William thinks he can do it. I love that about him, and I think I'd want to keep him because of that. Then a day later, Hetty told NHL Radio that he thinks Eklund should be sent down. Then he also said the same thing last night during the Devils game. Which is it, Hetty, if you will? Pick a side, if you will. Anyway. Like I'm, I'm like I'm not trying to bust Hetty's balls, but it's like, dude, stop. You know, it, it, does the fence post like go right up your ass? Like, pick a side. <laughs> I mean, geez. So, let's be honest. Now, the question becomes, who takes Eklund's spot on that wing position? I mean, last night we saw Benino get a look, as we mentioned earlier. A scout told our buddy Shang Peng that's probably where Benino belongs due to a decline in Benino's speed, and. Those are kind of tough words to stomach when you heard Doug Wilson say that he brought Bones in to specifically solidify that third line center spot. Uh, does this mean, especially with all the guys in COVID protocol and all that, do you think that we see um, a, uh, a Yoel <laughs> or Schmalevsky, Gregor, who is leading the CUDA right now in points and goals? or someone else in that 3C spot simply because Weatherby, for me, has just locked down 4C. So, and, and all of the guys that are on COVID, none of them are centers. So True. who are we going to see? Well, I, I think it's worth noting as well that Eklund goes out from the Couture line. I mean, the, the smart play is you put Meyer back with Couture and Dolan. Yeah, when he, yeah, when he returns. Right, but I'm thinking, you know what, I, I think... Eklund goes out, and it, it's amazing to me that this has happened again this year, considering it happened last year. But you recall, before everything fell apart, Barabanov was the extra guy. Mm. And since COVID <laughs> and what's your started, whole thing now? I dare you to scratch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. And, and you know, obviously COVID happens. Barabanov has been with Hurdle and Rudolph's Balsers the entire time. Now that Eklund is gone, to me, it, it makes too much sense to, you know, you just, you leave, you know, you essentially give Barabanov Eklund's spot. You know, the, he's no longer, you know, down with Peterson and Gadjevich and, you know, we'll see who he plays with depending on the, no, that's, <laughs> I think that's Barabanov's spot now. And I just want to say, you know, last year, Barabanov with the Sharks, we're not talking about the Maple Leafs. With the Sharks, seven point seven points in nine games last year. Yeah. This year, four points in six games, which is thirteen in fifteen. Now, That's, my question for la- you: Last time I've looked, not bad. Well, so my question for you, and my question for the audience, is: It still considered a small sample size if it takes place over two seasons? Mm. Makes you think. So it's dude. It's like that meme that that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. You, you look at them by themselves, yes. But over two seasons, what do we always talk about? Consistency. Mm-hmm. And just uh, and as we're we're uh, talking during the live show here, uh, it is a final in Anaheim. The Ducks have won four to one. So now the Sharks are down to fourth spot in the Pacific. Just wanted to get that out there. So. Uh, I, I guess we're going to see what happens. Uh, Benino's uh, look that in, along with McLean because, you know, Bugner can't go on the trip. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, there's obviously going to be some line juggling that, that happens until we get some guys back from COVID protocol. But I'll be interested to see at like game 20 
game 25 who the third and fourth line centers are. Because, I mean, we know Couture and Hurdle are the top two. It's going to be interesting to see how things shake out, especially if we see guys continue to do well in the A as Shmolevsky and Gregor are currently doing. Just right. Saying. And 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 to your point as well, you know, I don't think it's I, – I personally don't think it's fair to judge this team – until at, at at earliest November the twentieth, because you know I don't know if you caught it yesterday, but they said the the co- the players who have who are on the COVID protocol for the Sharks, they're not going on this five game road trip. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that they can't join the team late in a different city, but the likelihood of that is see it, it, not there. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna let you know right now that uh, I'll be judging this team on November thirtieth. When they play in New Jersey, and Evander Kane is able to rejoin. Shut your goddamn mouth. And that's what I'm saying. That's when I'll pass judgment. Because if Evander Kane is on the roster on that day, oh, I'm going to have some things to say. I am I will also be judging them on either the 24th or the 26th or both, because I hope to be at those games. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be judging them in person. Yes. <laughs> um, so back back to the attendance this week. And this was a comment that uh, Ryan made earlier. So, uh, like I said, worst in franchise history, sadly, uh, especially with how fun this team has been to watch. They've had to overcome a lot of you know, impediments in their way with the with the COVID and having to integrate all this youth. It's, it's been a lot. Um, take advantage of these prices, people. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Now, Ryan in the chat said the city of San Jose's draconian COVID rules is why they aren't selling tickets. Um, Ryan, Man. I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. There's like 18 other teams that have the exact same measures in place and are not seeing these same stats as their, for their ticket sales. So, uh, the math does not bear your comment out. I'm just saying like, I'm not, I'm not trying to dump on you. I'm just saying, go and look at the numbers for other teams. There is in fact, um, a a website and a, and if I can, I will put it in the show notes below, but it does go team by team. What each team, what their protocols are, what their mandates are. And again, you know, this is not team mandates per se. It's, it's, by the city or the county that the team is located in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because um, right now, uh, like Vegas, where you're at, there's like no mandate, right? Um, it, no, the the only mandate to go to a Golden Knights game is everybody has to wear a mask. But you, you know, don't have to. You don't have to show co- like that. You've got a COVID card, or you don't have nope, to. Yeah. N- no vaccination. No negative test. Just the mask, which is surprising to me because the Raiders are requiring vaccinations and I kind of (laughs) assumed one would follow the other, but I don't know. You would think you would think, uh, but Ryan here saying that he will be going to SAP on the 20th and, uh, that should be a fun game against the, uh, capitals. Not going to lie. If memory serves as a promotion that night, that might be the hockey fights cancer night for the Sharks. So get there early and and get yourself a, a, a nice purple Jersey. Chris, in the chat saying the prices are better now than when I was in college makes me miss living there. Yeah, take advantage of this right now because uh, it, it could change very fast. Uh, let's move on here. Oh, this is something that I've wanted to talk about for a hot minute. We don't have to go deep. This is just a point that I wanted to make. We had Drew Remenda subbing in for Curtis Brown this entire week during pre- and post-game with Brody. And the this is not to knock Curtis Brown, but for me, uh, I think Brownie does a fine job. But for me, my tastes, I feel that he's too Pollyanna. He doesn't seem to want to acknowledge reality or the elephant in the room sometimes and is sometimes hyper-focused on only spinning positive things. I loved Remenda's honesty this week. I loved him in the intermissions, breaking down plays and showing you things. I've never seen Brown do that. So for me, Remenda, oh God, can if if he can't get back with Randy 
please make him the, the you know the the pairing with Brody because him and Brody go get along really well. That's just my personal opinion. And and for those of you who who enjoy this stuff, uh, this Thursday against the Jets will be Dan Boyle's debut at the desk with Brody. There you go. I mean, I've you know I'm I'm on record as saying that you know as uh, I I turn the game on as soon as the national anthem ends and you know when it goes to intermission I set the the requisite 18 minute timer and I go do something else. I don't watch pre-game or post-game or intermission live. I don't watch these things for the exact reason you're talking about. That said, if Brody and Drew became the A team, if you will, mm-hmm. you might get me to tune in. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, th- this is going to be a real quickie because this was just something that we, you know, <laughs> we're talking about November 30th and in, in, in passing judgment, but uh, earlier this week, the New York Post reported with photo and video that Evander Kane was evidently at LAX earlier this week going to who knows where with his girlfriend. So what we can glean from that is he's not in the Bay Area. There you go. Hopefully he stays there. That's what I'm saying. Uh, there looks to be a new Sharky in training for those that care. All right. Next Nobody. Question. Yeah. Um, N- NBCSN California. Can you please stop using B roll from two years ago? Like your whole thing is you're trying to promote the idea of like wearing masks, being safe and all of that. And this entire week, every time they would show that B roll to get in and out of commercials, they're showing B roll from two years ago. So no one's wearing a mask. It's like, ugh, like, there has to be somebody in the background that like looks at this and goes, uh, okay, we've, we've made a mistake somewhere. Well, especially, <laughs> and you know, especially if, you know, as, as we've seen over the last year and a half, you know, Santa Clara County is very particular with what they are and are not okay with. And I'm imagining like somebody from the health office of Santa Clara County watching this footage and being like, what the hell are we doing? Right. Over here? You know? Yeah. Oh, my Lanta. Yeah, that, that's the thing that does make me a little nervous. It's like if somebody's from the, from the city is watching that and thinking that's live video, yeah. I'm like, oh, you're just inviting you know the city to come in and rake you over the coals. Yep, I oh, agree. God, like stop, stop. Pay attention here, people. It's, it's not as though NBCSN Bay Area has a propensity for paying attention to the sharks <laughs> chris bringing up the drew discussion was probably one of the top discussions on after dark in the first days back when we started in mid 2014 you're not wrong sir i need I, I should probably probably should have had a shirt that said bring back drew back in those days um and then sharks last saying if you interact with sharky at games now you can totally tell it's not the one that we've had for the last couple decades yeah but, uh, hey, time moves on. We all have to make the change. Uh, let's go around the NHL, shall we? I enjoy it. Except for this. <laughs> NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman was lambasted for a press conference he held last week for having to be shamed into calling on Rick, Rick Westhead. For those of you who don't know, he is the reporter that broke the Kyle Beach story with the Blackhawks. And, and circling back on this, I'm sorry, $2 million is a joke of a penalty. You know, according to Forbes, the Blackhawks make just under $2 million in gate receipts per game. The team is valued at over $1 billion. That's like having $100 and having to give somebody $2. I think they're going to be okay. You know, the, the penalty for this needed to be picks, uh, something more substantial than two Ryan Carpenter contracts. And it's been almost 30 years. Is it time for the NHL and Bettman to part ways at this point? Because evidently, according to Rick Westhead, NHL execs and sponsors are not happy with the way Bettman and Daly handled that press conference. As you can see by the tweet on the screen here, he spoke today to sports marketing execs who told him multiple sponsors have put the NHL on notice to improve the response to the Blackhawks abuse scandal 
NHL brand significantly tarnished over the past week, exec says, adding that some sponsors are unhappy with the league's crisis management. Yeah, I mean, as as, as they should be. You know, uh, you said Gary Bettman was lambasted for the press conference, and he absolutely should have been. He was talking afraid, and yeah. he was dodging the question. You know, he was very, um, very defensive, very combative. And from and what as, I understand, and this might be ticky tack, but like, didn't was like not even in a in a like coat and tie was just kind of like you know very cash. I mean, maybe I I don't really pay attention to that, but I'm more looking at like even you know he, like you said, you know he basically had to be convinced to answer a question from Rick Westhead, and even you know. Mark Lazarus, who covers the Blackhawks for the Athletic, you know, Bettman got lippy with him too. And it's like, you know, you go back and, and, and that's not to say, look, Gary Bettman, say what you want about him. He's done a lot of good things for the NHL in his tenure as commissioner. This one situation, if he handles it poorly, is going to ruin all of that. Mm -hmm. Nobody care. Nobody cares about billion dollar a year profits. Nobody cares about expansion or TV deals or any of that. If, you continue your behavior like this. This was, you know, brutal, awful. Yeah. And I think I'm surprised he hasn't come out and said, hey, I would like to speak again and get it right this time because, God, he really missed the mark on this one. And and you mentioned as well, um, you know, you you mentioned, you know, is, is Bettman's time up? Uh, if you listen to 32 Thoughts, the podcast, they were kind of – Previously 31. Yes, they were <laughs> discussing that as well. Um, a, supposedly, you know, there are a couple owners, or not uh, owners, people with involved with teams and the like, who have contemplated, you know, an NHL post Batman being like soon. Yeah, I mean, thirty years is a long time, my friend. Yeah, especially when you know this. Like, just the fact that this runs so deep. I mean, yes, the Blackhawks are part of the NHL, but the Blackhawks are, are – they're their own business. You know, they had a hand in this. The NHL has obviously fumbled the pass on this as well. The NHL PA has botched this. Yes, these are all businesses who are in the same industry working together, but it's three different businesses who have all taken this and messed it up. Well – It runs deep, and it's, and it's honestly and truly – tragic yeah that it that it's happened this way well and speaking of the blackhawks uh didn't they like fire anyone with the word coach in their title this past week <laughs> yeah they fired their coach fired their assistant coach and their other assistant coach Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> unrelated to the scandal this is because the blackhawks suck yeah that's a good point solid point <laughs> uh the Athletic reported – now, th this is a funny one. Uh, the NHL evidently – I mean, we're talking about, you know, trying to, uh, I don't know, rescue your brand or trying to spin something the right way. But, uh, look, The Athletic has reported that the NHL is working to provide tools for more player social media engagement. And, of course, my question is, <sighs> Why? <laughs> like, I, I get that you want to build the brand and players with personality can help you with that. See F Ferraro, comma, Mario, you know, his, his YouTube channel, a lot of fun. But what about the guys who don't give a shit? Like, see Crosby, comma, Sydney, Thornton, comma, Joe. Like, Jerk, comma, hockey. Right? Um, and what about the guys who get triggered on social media? Like Brad Marchand, uh, Jonathan Marcheseau. Let's, you know... You want to have a good time? Go look at some of the comments that Marcheseau responded to <laughs> on his Instagram last season. You know when they when they got bounced in the playoffs. Yikes! Um, I'm just saying it could be a slippery slope if you're not a guy like Joe Pavelski, who literally has like a team of people that it's you know I, I guarantee you Pavelski he doesn't have Twitter on his phone he does he's probably never seen his Twitter page he's got somebody that it's their job to manage it and they just promote things that Pavelski's doing they never look at the comments that's I'm telling you it's they just use it literally it's like going into the local uh, music store and posting a little flyer that said, my band's playing this week. That's it. You know, they don't come back and see if somebody defaced the poster. They just say, here's some information. Bye. 
probably the way it should be run. Uh, speaking of the athletic, there were some reports recently that said the web publication may be available for sale. And of course, my comment to that is you watch, it's going to be fanatics that buys them because they love ruining things. I enjoy. Am I wrong? I don't think so. We asked the question last week, who wins a game first, Chicago or Arizona? Ended up being Chicago. Now, Arizona finally did win one. They're currently 1-10-1 after being down by two against the Kraken in the first minute of the game and somehow rallied back to win 5-4. Jerk, my question to you, will this be Arizona's only victory this season? Uh, At least until they face Seattle again. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if you're referring to, you know, 2021, 2022, no, obviously not. It's 82 games. They're going to get more than one win. If you're talking about this season as in, if you're talking about this season as in the fall, well, we'll see. That's a different story. It could happen. (laughs) (laughs) Ay, ay, ay. Um, We also said, who would be the last to lose in regulation? I said Carolina, jerk said Florida, and it was, in fact, Florida after Carolina was vanquished by the Panthers yesterday. I was bumped. I Good. was bumped. It's, it's, it's not very often that I'm right and jerk is wrong, and yet this is another opportunity that jerk <laughs> has to tell me that he knows more. <laughs> uh, we mentioned it earlier, but it needs to be said again. Uh, ESPN, get your shit together, man. His name is Shimmick, not Sadik. <laughs> Come on, assholes. So let's get into the tweet of the week. Oh, love this time. Kevin Weeks, buddy. I love you, buddy. I love you. But man, did you get taken out. Did you you're taken for a lap, if you will. Uh, Kevin tweeting out, for all asking, my understanding is the NHL Flames have Kachuk, who is a future potential captain, an upcoming first-round pick, a former first-round pick, and two prospects in the Eichel sweepstakes with the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Look, uh, now if you look at that, that seems like a ridiculous overpay for a guy with injury issues. Uh, Didn't matter, though, because the very next morning, Jack Eichel was traded to the Vegas Golden Knights by the Buffalo Sabres this past Thursday. So let's get into this whatever. (laughs) So the Sabres received forward Peyton Krebs, who, if you listen to our buddy over at Sinbin, very high on Peyton Krebs. Uh, Alex Tuck, who a lot of Vegas fans really enjoy. Uh, A top 10 protected first round pick in the 22 NHL draft and a second round pick in the 23 NHL draft. Uh, now, we should tell you that this protection is basically if Vegas finishes poorly enough this season to be in the top 10 draft, all these positions are moved out one year. A 2023 third round draft pick was sent to, Ve- or sent, yes, sent to Vegas. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are responsible for the remaining five years of Eichel's eight year, $80 million deal. Uh, that's for me. That's you know. That's a win for the Sabers. And in fact, Kevin Evan or Ke- I'm sorry, Kevin Adams, the Sabers GM said retaining any part of Eichel's salary going forward was a non-starter. So, <clears throat> jerk, I have to ask you this: while those pieces went to the Sabers, there will be more fallout in Vegas because who else will the team potentially have to move in order to fit all of these players under the salary cap once everyone is healthy? Because according to Cap Friendly. The team is roughly $7 million over the cap when all players are healthy. How does Vegas stay cap compliant? Well, I think... Ay, ay, ay. I mean, right? I, a lot of take in on that one. I, I, I'm wondering, because of that fact that you mentioned, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if Jack Eichel's not going to play in the regular season. You know, Ooh. I know... I know they, you know, people are saying that he could be good to go by March, but... This is also the first time that this surgery has ever been done, um, for sure, on a professional athlete, maybe at all. So it, it's sort of like new territory. Like you could say, oh, no, he'll be good to go in three months. Or you could say, no, it'll be eight months. And neither one is really wrong because it's never happened. Um, <laughs> as for next year, 
yeah, that's, uh, you know. Bye-bye, Riley. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, aside from Riley Smith, they don't really have any big names that they need to sign. So, you know, yeah, that's that's what it looks like. It looks like Riley Smith is going to be let go unless, you know, unless they do something else, they can make it work. I, it is worth noting the salary cap is anticipated to go up a million bucks this year. So that will be a little bit of help. <laughs> scotch, um, scotch. But, you know, I mean, could they, you know, finesse the system and make it work to try and keep Riley Smith? Absolutely. But it's not likely, especially because they picked up Evgeny Dadanov. Um, it just doesn't it doesn't seem like it's in the cards. But that said, I, I still and, you know, strictly from a roster construction point of view, I like how this Vegas team is built. You know, the NHL, they it's put built out for now. Exactly. And, and I know we're going to touch on it in a second, but it's like, you know, I don't think Vegas really cares about next year. They care about right here, right now. Oh, my Lord. I mean, and first, good for them. Yeah. I mean, first round picks. It's like. <laughs> It's a green jacket, gold jacket. Yeah. <laughs> their, their first round picks. I mean, 2017, Cody Glass traded for Nolan Patrick. Uh, Suzuki, part of the trade for Pat Gioretti. Uh Brandstrom traded part of the Mark Stone deal. In 2018, they traded their first rounder along with the second and a third to get Tatar, who was, of course, later traded in the Pat Gioretti deal. In 2019, Peyton Krebs, boom, is now part of the Eichel deal. 2020, Brins, Brisson. No, what's his name? Brendan Brisson. 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 Sorry. Still in the system. Six goals, 11 points in eight games. And I know that there are more games now, but in those first eight, with the U of Michigan, uh, which, hello, playing with Tommy Bordeaux, or Bordelow, excuse me. Uh, right now, <laughs> like all these number one picks, and they still have one from 2021, and he's currently unsigned. Uh, and they traded their 2022 for, for Eichel. So, you know, it's, it's, it's win or go home, you know, for the next year or so it, it feels like, like, and don't get me wrong. I mean, who's their top line when everybody's healthy, you're talking Eichel centering stone and, and who patch already. There you go. That's, That's very good. But does it kind of remind you of the sharks from a couple of years ago where it just seems like very top heavy in the bottom? Not, not that but fearful. Even- but even then, um, you know, they they have, you know, their second line would be the misfit line, which is Riley Smith, William Carlson, and Jonathan Marcheseau. Very good line. You know, they've been together since the first day Vegas was a team, and they're still together. Um, you know, and even their third line, Dadnov, Yanmark, Chandler Stevenson, like, that's a really good third line. Like, I'm not tripping on this year at all. Like, if you're speaking of this, again, if you're a Golden Knights fan or if you're somebody who, who – gets up for a good roster construction like this golden knights team is is for you all right and uh at the very least this means that there's one less team that's interested in hurdle now yes (laughs) yeah i mean that's a fair point just saying but worst case scenario what if the surgery ruins eichel i mean surgeries have been known to go wrong yeah what like Um, what happens if buffalo gets krebs which like i said you talk to some of the Vegas people that they, they were actually really bummed. Like they're like, Oh yeah, you make that move for Eichel. But there are some people th- like kind of comparing this a little bit to like Josh Norris and Tierney and, and all the pieces that were moved to get Eric Carlson. Mm-hmm. And then we saw what Eric Carlson did for the first couple of seasons here, which wasn't a lot. If Krebs turns out to be Buffalo's Josh Norris, and Eichel turns out to be the Eric Carlson of the first two seasons for the Sharks. You know? Here's here's the thing I would say to that. Jack Eichel's 25. Good point. Now, I, I do... I I am going to hijack the, sh- the rundown a little bit here. Um, there was an Eric Carlson mentioned, so I just have to... <laughs> So, Just uh, you know, our buddy, our buddy Shang, you know, he put out an article there talking about what, um, you know, if the Sharks should have been sniffing around Jack Eichel. Ugh. And well, hold on, because I think there's uh, some I merit read that to article this. and I was just like, are you kidding? But go ahead. Well, it, it, it got the hamster spinning on the wheel a little bit. It was making me think about it. And and again, obviously, you you are correct when you bring up the health concerns of Jack Eichel. He could he could never play again. I Mm -hmm. personally don't think that's going to happen, but he could never play again. But let's just say for argument's sake, let's say he will play again and he will continue to be an elite level player. Yes. 
Sure. So if you're Doug Wilson, you know, and you want that, and especially too, you got to like, you got all this stuff looming hurdle, potentially leaving, you know, there's all kinds of stuff looming. You, you, to me, I look at what Vegas gave up for, uh, for Jack Eichel. And I look at this, like if you break this down from a shark's perspective, it's like, okay, 2022 first, 2023 second, you know, I think instead of tuck, I think you would say LeBanc. And instead of Peyton Krebs, I think maybe, I think you would say, oh, geez, I don't know. I think you could say a Co or a Bordalo or a Weisblatt. You know, obviously these guys are a bit behind Krebs. Krebs actually played in the NHL this year. But even if you want to put it on an NHL level, you could say, you know, maybe a Chemilevsky, maybe a Noah Gregor, you know, one of these guys, um, you know, maybe, maybe even a John Leonard. Mm-hmm. Because I'm looking at all those pieces I just listed. Let's just say to keep it simple. Leonard, LeBanc, first and a second. I don't really have an issue giving that up for a perfectly healthy and elite level Jack Eichel. I don't know about you. But it's, you know, the unknown. Will he be, sure. you know, the, 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 the Eichel that everybody, you know, is used to? We'll, and, we'll see. Right. And like I said, I think he will be personally, but... This and they and they mentioned it on Overdrive as well. This trade feels like Joe Thornton 2.0. Interesting, interesting. Uh, in the chat, Shoe Sign saying, uh, if Eichel can't return ever, then Vegas gets 10 million of LTIR for the next five years. I think they'd be fine with that possible outcome. Yes, uh, probably. <laughs> I, I'd be I, I'm agreeable with you on that. However, it still comes back to. Vegas is desperately hurting for that upper echelon center to put with Stone and Pacioretty. Mm -hmm. Just saying. So they, there are, they, it's like, yeah, they'd have all that money. They'd still have to go find the guy. And, you know, there are some whispers out there that Pacioretty might end up being the fall guy, Ooh. you know, which I think would be unfortunate for them because I think Pacioretty has played very well for the Golden Knights. But that said, if if you can trade a guy, you know, that is a part of a surplus you have and help and help uh, refill somewhere that you're deficient. I think you have to at least think about it. Absolutely. All right. Let's uh, <clears throat> we're beyond the hour time slot. So uh, tell our affiliates we're running long, but uh, let's hit a few more here. Uh, this is just what I find very humorous. You know, the, the NHL always looking to find money wherever it may hide itself. So Chipotle, and the NHL have announced this week that a multi-year North American partnership naming Chipotle the official Mexican-themed <laughs> quick service and Mexican-themed fast casual restaurant of the NHL. Jesus Christ. I mean, it makes sense. Is there a wider Mexican food than Chipotle? I don't think so. Taco Bell? Uh, I would debate. I would debate on that <laughs> one. Um Former Sharks, uh, Martin Jones, you love to see it, now has a 941 save percentage. <laughs> 201 goals against three wins. We are 17 more starts away from an Ian head shaving, my friends. It's coming. It has to happen. Uh, Josh Norris right now, we mentioned a moment ago, six goals, nine points in 11 games. God. You know, the, Love the guy, to see it. Dude, the guy that they thought was going to be their third line center, establishing himself as the number one. Love to see it. Uh, speaking of old top line center guys, uh, Joe Pavelski heating up just as coach. Five points in 10 games, including two goals. So, and he had, and actually, you may need to update this. He has a goal tonight. Oh, see? There you go. Love to see it. So, six points in 11 games. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, let's move on to the youth, shall we? All righty then, the Barracuda this week. Well, I don't, you know, I feel so bad for the AHO just because they are literally put together on a shoestring. If you go in and look at the website, <clears throat> like one website has them at 3-3-1, three, three, and one. one website has them at 4-3-1. and one. Come on, guys, get it together. Either way, uh, the Barracuda this week went two, or I'm sorry, one and two. And it was not pretty. Uh, a 4-1 loss 
at the Stockton Heat, but Scott Reedy would net what would be his team leading at the time, third goal of the year. Uh, but Coach Roy Somers said this was the worst game the Cuda have played this season. And then the Cuda got curb stomped seven to three. <laughs> so if you thought four to one was bad, uh, but the Texas Stars they played a pair against them. Uh, the the patchwork team with when you see all the guys being called up to the Sharks because of the COVID protocol, blah blah blah. They got goals from Noah Gregor. Jaden Homgawaks, Mark Alt, Noah Gregor with a three-point game in this one. Uh, his goal, a primary and a secondary assist. Uh, jerk, at this point, are you saying, hey, Noah, might want to start packing your bags? <coughs> oh, but do we, we've lost Jerk. Yeah, sorry about that. I was actually... <laughs> um... You know, I, I was actually requesting an autograph from Noah Gregor. That's my fault. Um, no, I, 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 I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you know. I would obviously have to look to the Barracuda schedule, but I'm just saying the, I, the, I'm the Sharks fly out tomorrow for their road game. I was gonna say I'm wondering <laughs> if he gets called up and goes on the trip. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Uh, Mel Nachuk continues to be Meh Nachuk after mm-hmm. giving up five goals on 18 shots. Pulled to start the third for Zach Amon. Amon. <laughs> it's very Jamaican. Amon. Uh, we're not seeing Sachenko because he is out on, well, oh, let me guess, COVID protocol. There you go. Uh, earlier today, though, the Barracuda did get a one back in a 7-5 to five win against the Texas Stars. This was Amon, his first win. Goals came from McGrew, who had two, along with, uh, oh, God, Here's another one. Jerk, help me out. Hamilik? Uh, yeah, Dylan Hamilik. There you go. Uh, Schmalevsky, Blickfeld, Weinger. But you know who got the game winner? Yoel! <laughs> <laughs> A three-point night for Joachim Blickfeld, yet possibly somebody else who may get a invitation to the charter out of San Jose tomorrow. Maybe? Could be. Just saying. Your leader for the Shark, or for Shark, sorry, my bad. Uh, for the Barracuda right now, like I said, Gregor, Reedy, and Hamgawax, three goals each. Assists, Gregor, five points. Gregor, eight. Yeah, pack your bags, buddy. Uh, but Mel Nuchuk, oh, Christ, five starts. He has been lit the hell up like a Roman candle. 855 save percentage with a 403 goals against. Yikes. Uh, but this coming week, the Barracuda head to Western Canada for a pair against the Abbotsford Canucks for the first time ever. Uh, this is the Abbotsford Canucks' first season, formerly known as the Utica Comets. Or if you're someone else, you say Utica. No? Like Ottawa? All right, then. We move on to the prospects. The top five changed just to scotch this week. Tristan Robbins continues to just decimate teams now with 23 points in 13 games. Brandon Coe now has six goals, 20 points in 13 games with the OHL's North Bay Battalion. Daniil Gushkin leads the prospect pool in goals with nine, posting 14 points in 11 games. Thomas Bordalo has two goals and 11 points in 10 games at the University of Michigan and coming in hot. Boom, moving into the top five. Ozzy Weisblatt, now with five goals, ten points with the Prince Albert Raiders. So, with that, I think we can start thinking about wrapping this whole thing up, if you don't mind. Uh, I guess this week we are brought to you by SJ Sharks Jerseys on Instagram. So, if you'd like a cool custom jersey done by yours truly, SJ Sharks Jerseys on Instagram. We're talking Bay Area Unite mashups or just custom Sharks jerseys. By the way, featured on Sharks pre and post game, courtesy of Sonia. So, famous last words, jerk, before we get the hell out of here. Famous last words. Uh, I think the Sharks are still in a good position. Like you mentioned earlier this week, 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Mm-hmm. Um, not bad considering you're missing a third of your team. And it's not like they're missing the bottom two lines. Like they're missing two of their top nine forwards. They're missing four of their top six defensemen. The Sharks are playing very well 
despite the fact that they're missing a third of their team. And so begs the question, how are they going to play when it's a full boat? Remains to be seen, but I'm optimistic. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think this uh, this road trip is going to be really tough. I think if they come back two and three, it's a win. <laughs> Calgary, Winnipeg, Colorado, Minnesota, St. Louis. That's that's going to be a tough road to home, my friend. And I got to be honest, I'm going to be pissed off if Reimer doesn't start at least three of these. I'm going to be pissed off if he doesn't start the next one, to be quite honest. Yeah, I think, like we talked about last week, you go with the hot hand. Yeah, uh, you absolutely do. So, I mean, Reimer seems to have it right now. Hill, the last three games, doesn't. So, boom, maybe maybe the play is, look, let's go with Reimer against Calgary, and then you can put Hill again, you know, in versus Winnipeg because he already has a win against them. So, maybe that helps. Who knows? Um. Yeah, that's so sad. Uh, Famous last words for me. I don't really have any. Just hope you guys had a good week. I hope we all have a good week watching the Sharks. I'm just, I'm I'm very fearful about what this week is going to bring, but hopefully we'll see some guys come off the COVID list. I mean, God, I mean, how long has it been now? I mean, how long do they have to isolate? Like 10 days if they can't post two within 48 hours, two negatives? Yeah, I believe it's it's either 10 or 14, yeah. Oh, so basically none of these guys making the road trip. Correct. Oh, oh, you, oh you hate to see it. <sighs> All right. So um, anyway, I guess, you know what? My final words are, look, this team, look, the, the, <laughs> they're very fun to watch. Look at these shots that I'm showing you. This is from the St. Louis game. St. Louis coming in, best team in the Central. These there, it's too many empty seats here, people. You love the Sharks? Get in. Get some. The, now is the time to pick up some tickets. This is this is a fun, exciting team. You know, the, the expectations were so low. <laughs> so to see these guys, whether it's Ryan Merkley, Jonathan Dolan, dude, like this is going to be a fun team to to watch. They even if they're not going to set the world on fire. You know, it can't be. William Eklund was not the only reason you were buying tickets, people, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore strong. If you ever have any questions or topics you'd like to hear us chew the fat on, you can send them at Teal Town USA on Twitter. Don't forget to join us on our Discord channel where the chat never stops. Believe you me, it never, it never does. Uh, and you can find that link in the show notes. Uh, so remember to leave your take in the comments below, especially if you were not able to watch this live. So let us know what your take is. Uh, have you liked what you've seen from the Merkley boys so far? Um, who else has like set the world on fire? I mean, Jonathan Dolan. Hey, hey you, you really want to set somebody's world on fire? I dare you in the comments below, leave a disparaging remark about Rudolph's balsers and watch what <laughs> jerk does. <laughs> That's a good way to get me to respond. I'm just saying. So, uh, thanks for, sh- thanks for showing up for us. Uh, episode 139 is now in the books. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next Sunday for episode 140. Who knows what in the world's going to happen then? Have a great night, everybody. And we'll see you next week.